Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I would like to share with you the topic chemical bonding. At first let's look at electronegativity and bonding. Electronegativity is the ability of an atom to attract the pair of electrons in a covalent bond to itself. The Pauling scale is used to assign a value of electronegativity for each atom. Fluorine is the most electronegative atom on the periodic table and it has a value of 4 on the Pauling scale. This is the one which represents the Pauling scale. This is a scale for measuring electronegativity and the values increase across periods and decreases down groups. You can see fluorine has the highest value of 4. What are the factors affecting electronegativity? They are nuclear charge, atomic radius and shielding. First is the nuclear charge. An increase in the number of protons leads to an increase in nuclear attraction for the electrons in the outer shells. Therefore, an increased nuclear charge results in an increased electronegativity. Atomic radius. Electrons closer to the nucleus are more strongly attracted towards its positive nucleus. Those electrons further away from the nucleus are less strongly attracted towards the nucleus. Therefore, an increased atomic radius results in a decreased electronegativity. The next one is shielding. The addition of extra shells and subshells in an atom will cause the outer electrons to experience less of the attractive force of the nucleus. Thus, an increased number of inner shells and subshells will result in a decreased electronegativity. And the trends in electronegativity is across a period from left to right, it increases. As you move from left to right across a periodic table, atoms have a greater nuclear charge and smaller covalent radius. This allows the nucleus to attract the bonding electrons more strongly. When you go down a group, the electronegativity of atoms decreases. This is because atoms increase in size with a greater number of energy shells. The extra energy levels and increased covalent radius keep the bonding electrons further away from the nucleus. The screening effect is caused by the extra energy levels and means that atoms further down groups have less attraction for the bonding electrons. How to predict the bond formation? The differences in Pauling electronegativity values can be used to predict whether a bond is covalent or ionic in character. Electronegativity and covalent bonds. If both atoms will have the same electronegativity value and have an equal attraction for the bonding pair of electrons, it leads to the formation of a covalent bond. The equal distribution leads to a non-polar molecule. When atoms of different electronegativities form a molecule, the shared electrons are not equally distributed in the bond. The more electronegative atom can withdraw the bonding pair of electrons towards itself, which can lead to a polar covalent molecule. The next is electronegativity and ionic bonds. If there is a large difference in electronegativity of the two atoms in a molecule, the least electronegative atom's electron will get transferred to the other atom. This in turn leads to an ionic bond. One atom transfers its electron and the other gains that electron. As you can see here, when the electronegativity difference is less than 0.4, the bond type is pure covalent. And if the electronegativity difference is between 0.4 and 1.8, the bond type is polar covalent. If the electronegativity difference is greater than 1.8, then the bond is ionic. The next topic is ionic bonding. When metals react with nonmetals, electrons get transferred from metal atoms to the nonmetal atoms, producing an ionic bond. This compound is called an ionic compound. And the metal atoms become positive ions, nonmetal atoms become negative ions. This strong electrostatic force of attraction between positive and negative ions is said to be an ionic bond. Dot and cross diagram for sodium chloride. As you can see here, sodium 
from sodium one electron is getting transferred to chlorine thus making it an octet complete state so sodium becomes sodium ion and chlorine becomes chloride ion that electrostatic force of attraction between sodium ion and chloride ion leads to an ionic bond this is an example another example magnesium oxide where two of the electrons from magnesium is getting transferred to oxygen another example is calcium fluoride calcium is donating its two electrons to two fluorine thus calcium becomes calcium 2 plus and fluoride F minus. That's the formula is CaF2. Then comes the metallic bonding. In a metal, the atoms are packed closely together in a regular arrangement called lattice. Metal atoms in a lattice tend to lose their outer shell electrons and become positive ions. The outer shell electrons occupy new energy levels and are free to move throughout the metal lattice. We call these electrons as delocalized electrons or mobile electrons. And metallic bonding is the strong electrostatic attraction between positive metal ions and delocalized electrons or C of electrons. The next one is covalent bonding. This occurs between two nonmetals when two atoms share one or more pairs of electrons result in a covalent bond formation. This occurs when there is less electronegativity difference or relatively small or zero electronegativity difference then we can say that the bond formed is covalent bond an example is hydrogen molecule which is formed between two hydrogen atoms and oxygen molecule between two oxygen atoms you can see a double bond between two oxygen atoms nitrogen molecule is having a triple bond in between it is sharing three electrons per nitrogen atom so three pairs of electrons similarly the other example is chlorine molecule it shares a shared pair of electrons one shared pair of electrons you can see the next example is hcl hydrogen chloride molecule hydrogen and chlorine both fill their outer shells by sharing electrons another example is carbon dioxide molecule c O2. Carbon is sharing its electrons towards two oxygen atoms. NH3, ammonia molecule, hydrogen and nitrogen both fill their outer shells by sharing electrons. Another example is methane molecule. Each hydrogen now shares two electrons with carbon. This is ethane molecule. In ethane molecule, each carbon atom fills their outer shell by sharing electrons with one other carbon atom and some hydrogen atoms. Another example is ethene. As you can see here, there forms a double bond between two carbon atoms. That means four electrons is being shared there and then single bond between carbon and hydrogen. One pair of electrons is shared between carbon and hydrogen. There are some cases in which the electrons around a central atom may not have a noble gas configuration. Example is BF3. It has only six electrons around the boron atom. We say that boron atom is electron deficient. As you can see here, fluorine, three fluorine atoms total six electrons only. It's not 8, so it's electron deficient. Another example is SF6 sulfur hexafluoride. It has 12 electrons around the central sulfur atom. We say that this has an expanded octet. That means more than 8. PCL5 is another example which has 10 electrons around the central phosphorus atom. It also has expanded octet. Sulfur dioxide. The sulfur atom forms a double bond with each oxygen atom. This leaves a pair of non-bonding electrons on the sulfur atom. There are 10 electrons around the sulfur atom. Sulfur also has an expanded octet. The next type of bonding is coordinate bonding or dative bonding. 
it is the sharing of a pair of electrons between two atoms where both the ele- electrons in the bond come from the same atom this is also called dative covalent bond and the requirements for a dative covalent bonding are one atom should have lone pair of electrons the other atom should have unfilled orbital to accept the lone pair in other words it should be an electron deficient compound coordinate bond is represented by an arrow drawn from the atom donating to towards the atom accepting here is an example of the formation of a coordinate bond in the ammonium ion as you can see here from ammonia the two electrons lone pair of electrons is getting shared with hydrogen positive which has no electrons so both the electrons comes from nitrogen that's why it is called the coordinate bond or dative bond as you can see the arrow is coming from nitrogen to hydrogen another molecule that has coordinate bond is aluminum chloride at high temperatures aluminum chloride exists as molecules with the formula AlCl3 this molecule is electron deficient it still needs two electrons to complete the outer shell of the aluminum atom at lower temperatures two molecules of aluminum chloride combine to form a molecule with formula Al2 Cl6 which is a dimer as you can see here this is a dot and cross diagram for aluminum chloride Al2Cl6 aluminum AlCl3 combines with another AlCl3 and forms a dimer while forming dimer they forms coordinate bonding as you can see here the bond formed is from chlorine to aluminum in both the cases that's called dative bonding or coordinate bonding the next subtopic is about sigma bonds and pi bonds a single covalent bond is formed when two nonmetals combine each atom that combines has an atomic orbital containing a single unpaired electron when a covalent bond is formed the atomic orbitals overlap to form a combined orbital containing two electrons this new orbital is called the molecular orbital the greater the overlap the stronger the bond this mixing of atomic orbitals is called hybridization mixing an s orbital with 3 2 or 1 p orbitals forms sp3 sp2 and sp hybrid orbitals mixing an s orbital with 3 p orbitals is called sp3 hybridization each orbital has 1 1/4 s character and 3/4 p character mixing an s orbital with 2 p orbital is called sp2 hybridization and mixing an s orbital with 1 p orbital is called sp hybridized orbitals as you can see here one s orbital combines with 3 p orbitals forming sp3 hybridization the second one one s orbital and 2 p orbitals form sp2 which forms a double bond and sp forms a triple bond sigma bonds are formed from end on overlap of atomic orbitals pi bonds are formed from sideways overlap of atomic orbitals as you can see here sigma bonds can form from ss sp and pp sigma pi bonds can form from a uh, pp first pi bond and second pi bond is shown here example hydrogen molecule 21s orbitals in hydrogen overlap to form a covalent bond in ethane as you can see here the bonds are formed by linear overlap of atomic orbitals and all are sigma bonds the next example is ethene the displayed formula is given here ch2 double bond ch2 each carbon atom in ethene uses three of its four outer electrons to form sigma bonds two sigma bonds are formed with the hydrogen atoms and one sigma bond is formed with the other carbon atom The fourth electron from each carbon atom occupies a p orbital which overlaps sideways with the similar p orbital on the other carbon atom this forms a pi bond overlap of p orbitals to produce a pi bond in ethene The next example is hydrogen cyanide in hydrogen cyanide one sigma bond is formed between the hydrogen atom and a carbon atom 
Second sigma bond is formed between the carbon and nitrogen. This leaves the p orbitals on the nitrogen atom to form two pi bonds at right angles to each other, thus forming triple bonds between carbon and nitrogen. The next example is nitrogen molecule. Nitrogen has three bonds between two nitrogen atoms. When there are more than one bond in between two molecules, one will be sigma and the other will be pi bonds. There is a triple bond in nitrogen molecule out of which one is sigma and two pi bonds. Hence, the nitrogen molecule is one sigma, two pi. The next subtopic is about bond energy. This is the energy required to break one mole of a particular covalent bond in the gaseous states. Bond energy has units of kilojoules per mole. The larger the bond energy, the stronger the covalent bond is. Bond length. The bond length is the internuclear distance of two covalently bonded atoms. The greater the forces of attraction between electrons and nuclei, the more the atoms are pulled closer to each other. This decreases the bond length of a molecule and increases the strength of the covalent bond. Triple bonds are the shortest and strongest covalent bonds due to the large electron density between the nuclei of the two atoms. And the reactivity of these covalent molecules is greatly influenced by the bond polarity, the bond strength and the bond type if it's sigma or pi. Higher the polarity, greater will be the reactivity. Bond energy is directly proportional to stability, hence inversely proportional to reactivity. Pi bonds are more reactive than sigma bonds because their electrons are not held as tightly by the nuclei. So that's all. Thank you so much for watching this video.